Right, let's start with um, President Muhammad Buhari granting a presidential pardon to 159 convicts, including uh, ex-governor Joshua Darie and former governor Jolly Nyame of Tanaba State, who were both jailed for stealing state funds. This hasn't gone without much criticism. What impression does this give you upon hearing this news? I'm very, very disappointed. Kind of shocked. There are certain things that, if you told me the president would do about eight years ago, I would argue fiercely with you and tell you that look, this president that I know would not go to that point. This president that I know would not compromise the war against corruption, will not wink at corruption in any way, will not spear corrupt people. But what have we seen? By pardoning corrupt people who are duly sentenced to jail terms, the president has disappointed a good number of his admirers who saw him as a new broom that will help sweep away corruption in our country. If you read the judgment handed down by Justice Van Joku against those two individuals, you would even be more disappointed in the decision that the National Council of States has uh, permitted the president or advised the president to take. This whole thing emanated from the uh, Attorney General of the Federation, they made the recommendation, and uh, the president went ahead to exercise uh, his power of pardon. But I believe that, one, our laws are not strong enough to fight for us. They do not deter people sufficiently. And I believe that jailing somebody who stole billions of Naira jailing someone who stole billions of Naira for just 12 years and having that same sentencing um having that same person released from prison it does not tell people that we are serious about fighting corruption it does not tell people that look the consequences of corruption are too great for one to take to corruption If we really want to defeat corruption, then the laws should be amended. The laws should punish convicted corrupt persons a lot more. That is what should happen. 12 years, certainly not enough. And then after a few years, the same person sentenced to 12 years is told to go home so that I can take part in uh, uh, my, uh, politics and the rest. It makes no sense at all. And it's not a precedent that um, we, we backed him all the way, supported him because of his credentials as an incorruptible person that should be taking that kind of decision. It shouldn't be the president allowing corrupt people to, to, to walk home after being jailed. We have seen the U.S. Department of State this week issue a statement that Nigeria is not doing enough to battle corruption, saying that the executive as well 
as the legislature continue to pile pressure on judicial officers to judge cases in their favor, to resolve cases in their favor. The U.S. Department, U.S. Uh, Department of State also said that our judges receive bribes to compromise cases before them. So you see that when it comes to corruption, we are really not doing enough. And what the president did this week sends a very bad signal to the rest of the world that we are not interested in fighting corruption. We are not interested in defeating corruption. These are governors of the 2007 set. They left office in 2007. We only just secured their conviction in 2018. And we're already telling them to go home. I mean, if it was an ordinary man that was jailed, I'm sure the Attorney General would not recommend, if it was uh, an ordinary man that was jailed for stealing, the Attorney General would not recommend such a person for pardon. But in our country, the law favors the high and mighty. The law favors the wealthy people. And now we are exercising the prerogative of mercy in favor of such big people who have been convicted for stealing. This uh, it, it just it just makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, it makes no sense. Right, because but but that then should, that shouldn't be two sets of laws: one for the poor and one for the rich.